Here is my Tandy 1000 SX with the cover removed. This is the computer that you can see in the background of almost all of my videos. I've already done a video about this computer and some of the upgrades I've done to it, so I won't go into too much detail about it. I've also done a video about this Microsoft Import Bus Mouse Card and the original Microsoft mouse I use with it. And behind it is an original Tandy 2400 baud internal modem card which came with the computer when it was new. I recently did a video using this card to dial several bulletin board systems and hiding behind that is the one piece of new hardware I have in this computer is a low-tech 1 megabyte RAM board which I use to add upper memory blocks to load drivers into. I may do a video about this in the future. And previously I had another piece of new hardware in this computer. It was an XTCF card which lets you use a compact flash card as a hard drive for vintage PCs like this. But as you can see I've since replaced that with a period correct hard card. It has a 40 megabyte Seagate IDE XT hard drive on it because even though the XTCF card worked fine and is much faster I just prefer having a real hard drive in my vintage computers. And here hiding below the system ROM BIOS chip is another period correct upgrade that I'm lucky to have and that is a Dallas smartwatch module. That's because this system, like many XT class machines, does not have an onboard real-time clock. So ordinarily, every time you turn on the computer, you would have to enter the time and date. Otherwise, the computer would always think it's midnight on January 1st, 1980. So back in the day, you could add one of these smartwatch modules, which has a little battery built into it, which keeps the time and date in its memory so that you don't need to enter it every time you turn on the computer. But unfortunately these modules haven't been built in probably over 20 years and those batteries in them are starting to go dead with time. I'm very lucky that this one is still working but many of them are not. Even if you buy one on eBay that claims to be new there's a very good chance that it will come with a dead battery and will be unusable. Luckily there is now a modern replacement for the smartwatch module which uses a user replaceable external battery. It's called the smartwatch plus. It's made by Derek Osborne in Australia better known as cybernetic systems and I'm going to show you a version of it that I actually helped develop because he previously had a version of it designed for the Tandy 1000 EX and HX but that version would not fit into this Tandy 1000 SX because because it would overlap with and be obstructed by these expansion slots. So to help him develop a version that would fit this machine, I sent him the board layout of the Tandy 1000 SX and a photo of my machine, which he used to develop this version of it, which is the new Tandy 1000 Smartwatch Plus module, which does fit this computer. He also still has the version for the EX and HX machines. It's available on Tindy.com and the price is $19.95 plus shipping, which because it's coming from Australia costs about $15. So all told you're going to be spending about $35 to get one of these. But there you can see it is the Tandy 1000 Smartwatch Plus and there's the socket for the system ROM BIOS chip and you plug this into the motherboard and then you install a CR1632 battery which does not come with it because you can't send batteries by airmail. So you'll need to buy your own battery for it but they're readily available. So I'm going to take out this old vintage Dow smartwatch module and replace it with this new reproduction smartwatch plus module and hopefully it will work exactly the same. So I'm going to use my chip puller to remove the system ROM chip and the original Dallas smartwatch module which may or may not come out together as one piece here. So gently pull up and yes it did come out as one piece. So if your Tandy did not originally have the smartwatch module installed you would just remove the system ROM chip and that would be it. But since I do have this smartwatch module I'll have to carefully pry off the ROM chip from the smartwatch module which may be better done off camera but we'll see how it goes don't want to bend any of the pins I think it's coming out there we go there's the Dallas smartwatch module and you can see the date code of 9622 
So this has a battery in it from 1996 that's still good, but for how much longer, I don't know. Sooner or later, the battery in this thing would go dead and I would need to replace it with this reproduction anyway, so might as well do it now. Now I can install the ROM chip into the new SmartWatch Plus module, and you notice this notch, which indicates the side that has pin 1 on it. And there's a similar notch in the ROM chip. So just pay attention to that. Line up the side with the notch in it with the side of the socket with the notch in it. The ROM chip is now installed into the SmartWatch Plus module. I also installed a new battery. And the good thing is there's only one way to put this module in because the other way would be blocked by these expansion cards. So the only way it can go in is like this. And there it is installed. It may actually help to remove these expansion cards and also the metal side bracket of the Tandy case. That way you can look in from the side and double check that you're getting the pins into the socket correctly. Just to make sure you don't bend any of the pins when you install it. Now when I boot up the computer, I still have the driver installed for the original smartwatch module. Which just loaded now. And you can see it set itself to January 1st, 2000 because this new module has not had its time and date set yet. And there's two programs I use for the smartwatch module. There's RT Clock, which loads and sets the time and date. And there's also Test Clock which tests to make sure the clock is working, which I'm going to run now. And it's set to Journey First 2000, but I'm going to see if I do RT clock. First you enter the date. You have to enter the leading zeros. So September 1st will be 09 slash 01. And you only do two digits for the year. So for 2021, you just type 21. And for the time, you have to enter it in 24-hour format. Right now it's 8.37 p.m., so I'm going to type in 20.37 and just 00, 0 for the seconds. And there the clock is set. September 1st, 2021, 20.37. And I'm going to do test clock again to see if that's working. And yes, it is. You can see the time advancing. But did you notice something strange? September 1st, 2021 is not a Sunday. It's a Wednesday. But don't worry, this is not a problem with the smartwatch chip. Instead, the problem is caused by the old driver I was using, as I'll show here. Okay, I found the original Tandy smartwatch driver. This is the updated version from the TV Dog Tandy 1000 archive, which is Y2K compliant. And now I can see the problem. Whereas DOS thinks the year is 2021, the smartwatch chip thinks it's 1921. So the way to fix that is to enter the correct date and time into DOS using the conventional date and time commands as you see. And then you enter the command SMW clock C, which copies the time and date from DOS into the smartwatch chip. And there you go. Now it says Wednesday, September 1st, 2021. So the lesson is, ignore what I said about the RT clock and test clock programs. And instead, just use the updated Y2K compliant version of the smartwatch driver from the TV Dog Tandy 1000 archive website, which I will include a link to. And now with that driver, you can see everything is fine. It's showing the correct day of the week, the correct date, and the correct time. And then, as instructed in the README file, you add the command SMW clock space S to your autoexec.bat file to automatically set DOS to the date and time that's stored in the smartwatch chip whenever you turn on your computer. Now that I've thought about it for a while, what I believe was happening was that other program I was using was not Y2K compliant because when you enter the date in that program, it only accepts a two digit year. So it was actually sending this chip to 1921. However, 
DOS does not recognize dates before 1980 as valid. So DOS was seeing that date in the chip of 1921, realizing that's not a valid date, and automatically corrected it to 2021. And I just didn't realize it until I noticed that discrepancy in the day of the week. But now that I'm using the updated Y2K compliant smartwatch driver from the Tandy 1000 archive website, now both the smartwatch chip and DOS are correctly set to 2021. So that's my rather timely video for Septandi 2021 about the new reproduction Smartwatch Plus module from Cybernetic Systems in Australia for older Tandy 1000 computers. Although I don't believe there's anything necessarily Tandy specific about that module, if you have any old XT class machine that does not have an onboard real time clock and it uses a single 28 pin BIOS ROM chip and it has space on the board to fit that module, you could install it and it should work fine just like it does in this Tandy. And yes, I know there's ways to hack into these old Dallas modules, disconnect the battery that's in them and install an external battery to get them working again, but that's messy and difficult and I'd rather support a new piece of hardware that's on the market that accomplishes the same goal much more elegantly.